Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Rakanath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center New York, Kostuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Friday. It's the day before Ratha Atra, and it's our beginning of uh, the end of our uh, Ragu and City Lunsford retreat here at the farm, which we had an incredible night last night we're going to talk about. But today starts. We're all about to pack it up and pack it in and head to New York City for Lord Jagannath's Ratha Atra. And our festival is going to start with a class with Radha Swami tonight, part of our retreat at the Bhakti Center. Good morning, Kostu. I know you had some festivities last night. I heard they were very, very good. I, yeah. Ours was a little better. It, yours was very, very good is good. I don't. I want you to understand that very good is very good. But you know, we had Madhava here, and we were actually floating around. We actually Madhava's learned how to levitate. Very, very good. No, Madhava's. <laughs> next level i can't take anything away from him he's wonderful put raganath I, I heard your program was good but i think ours was better you know what's interesting it it, it, it wasn't that's the thing it wasn't <laughs> better than ours because our program when it ended everyone was like what what it's over we could have chanted uh, we thought that was end. just the warm-up we like, were like we were ready to cook madhava has this thing where he takes you on a journey. Oh, he does. That's he what does. it felt like—a journey where you're like in a. Even me, and you know me, I'm very fidgety. I'm like an <laughs> ADD black belt. He slowed you, you down. Know? He slowed me down. He grounded me. He took me on his magical flower airplane and floated me to the holy name. And everybody was like, just like losing it, and we were all like floating around the room. And when it ended, we were just like, "What's going on? What? Where, where are you going? What's <clears> happening?" <throat> It went, but I can't, I can't explain it except time stood still. And I feel like, okay, after that, I was like, I got to, I've got to like up my Kirtan game. That was my takeaway from that. Oh, nice. Nice. Great. So I'm tell me how your pretty good is, program was. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry that my voice is almost totally gone. Do I sound terrible? You sound beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I hear your heart. I hear your heart. Yeah, that's what I tell you right now. First of all. I, I, we could talk the whole show just about what went on last night. It was, I got really touched last night. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what? Nothing, <laughs> just go. Broken up, but yeah. I was touched. Don't keep it, just be cool. But, um, I, you know, maybe part of it is that I don't spend so much time at the Bhakti Center. Okay, there's yeah. like a lesson there for you maybe and um but also i don't know it was just something descended sometimes um sometimes what you read about in these books you know we read chaitanya charitamrita we read these books about bhakti mm. and they talk about kirtan and they talk about the way that bhakti yogis vaishnavas how they associate with one another and it seems to sometimes be painted in these very idealistic ways you know right it's like okay what are they doing they're experiencing this <laughs> and, 
And, um, and then sometimes you feel that that idealistic picture or let's say idealistic energy, you actually feel it and it kind of manifests in this world. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> maybe not, maybe not on the level that's described in these books where it's the liberated souls that are completely free from their, their, um, whatever bondage of materialism they may be hanging on to whatever vestiges of that may still be infiltrating you know their 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 minds or hearts or um whatever the material circumstance and its limitations are but you feel that energy nonetheless and you feel it in a um uh a real way profound way that's what i was feeling that all last night in so many different i saw so many people where i'm gonna and i and um, I just realized how much I love them all, you know. Oh. It, yeah, it was it was really really beautiful, and, I, and it felt it felt to me like everybody was feeling it like that, you know. Mm. Mm. You know, Arsh felt I, like this. Uh, uh, you know how like Lord Chaitanya used to have the secret kirtans. You, you oh, go yeah. behind the gates of Srivas Thakur's house. Yeah. We all got into that yoga studio, like closed the doors and packed in, and then we're just like singing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the quality of the people and the connection with everyone there, and Madhava and his team becoming like the expert captains of the ship. Yeah, it just made like okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. It just made me feel that type of like clarity. Yeah, you know, um, I was sitting with you know we had our wisdom of the sages get together at Davy's Kitchen, the incredible really? restaurant. Yeah. And then we went up. Who are you sitting with? Who are you sitting with? Um, Akiko G. Uh, Akiko G. Okay. Chapuji. Chapuji. All right. Yeah. Um, I, there's so I I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to burn out my voice kind of too. But a, a wonderful group of people. Greg DeGesu was there. Uh, there. There are so there's so many nice beautiful people. Um. And. Uh, we went up, the kirtan had already started, it was about half an hour in. But sometimes we sneak people in th through the, it's very unorthodox for a Krishna temple because normally the only people that go into the priest's room, the pujari room, is people that are second initiated into that, you know, into that so that they can perform those rituals and they're dressed a certain way and their cleanliness standard is a certain level and all that. You're sneaking people into the Pajari room? Yeah, we sneak. It's the only way. Uh, it's the only way, you know. <laughs> and so um, we all snuck in there. And we're sitting there uh, and just totally having a wonderful, just floating on like a magic carpet, you know, just like floating. And then uh, at a certain point towards the end, I got up and I was kind of dancing or over overseeing it from a different angle. And then I went out the Pujari room to the back. Um, and, and felt the energy back there. And everywhere I looked, first of all, I was just everywhere I turned, I was meeting another beautiful person that means so much to me. Hmm. And and uh, and and everyone was feeling that energy. There was someone leading the kirtan. I don't remember his name towards the end. It was, you know, kirtan is beautiful when everybody lets go of all of their, whatever they're carrying around with them in their minds. Mm. and everybody gets into it, and this is important, together, right? Everybody gets into it together. Mm. And when a, a really good kirtan leader, it's not so much about their skills. This is what Madhava does. This is his focus. We're going to keep it simple. Yeah. We're going to do this together. You know, right? what I, you know what my walk away with that was? He, he really preempted the kirtan nicely. Like, yeah, he does. You go to a kirtan for an experience. You know, you go to I mean, I see some woman's face and she's blissful. I want that bliss. Like, you don't go there thinking, I want bliss. You go there thinking, I'm here to please Krishna. Oh, yeah. That shift to the consciousness where I want bliss. I want to experience something. Right. I want, I want, I want some type of yeah. gooey, gooey, sweet feeling inside. It's not that. It's, I'm here to please Krishna. And that shifts everything. And this weekend, I'm going to put this out there to everyone going to New York City's uh, Jagannath Rathiatra. When you pull that Jagannath cart and when you sing to Lord Jagannath, do it to please Lord Jagannath. Thank you. Do the whole thing to please Lord Jagannath. And you know what, Kastu, but this was like, you know, they say these five potent items of bhakti. 
Yeah. It can give like a neophyte person a taste of what it's like to be a liberated soul. That's what I it think says. I had that. My, my first experience was at a New York Rothy Ocho where I felt like I'm in complete ecstasy today <laughs> because it was all day of hearing and singing and chanting and pulling the car and focus. And I felt like, and I literally felt like, I think I'm a pure devotee. I think I was, I was really new. And I was like, <laughs> I think I've become a pure devotee today. I think this is the day. Works, this is, I've been waiting for this day now for about a year. And now I'm a pure devotee. <laughs> it was that type of experience. <clears throat> but that was the mood. You're fully engaged. You're just there to serve and you just want to please the Lord and the devotees. And you're just, you become out of the body. And that's what I, feel like really I, I held on to that yesterday with that instruction i'm just going to sing to please the lord and uh it's it's next carry, level stuff we can carry that instruction for the whole life yeah so important you know i was going to read a little something we're gonna what you got for me and this is when um that some of us this was put together some i don't know maybe 10 years ago or something like that but it was a vision statement for the bhakti center that some of the leaders mm -hmm. got together and we discussed and edited it down then we brought it to Radha Swami he liked it a lot <clears throat> so this is a vision statement it describes what we are and what we wish to become more and more okay for the bhakti center ready it says we are a community based on the pure spiritual principles of bhakti as taught by Srila Prabhupada we come together to hear chant and serve Radha Murlidhar, Radha and Krishna, through making wonderful offerings to them, caring for their property, and caring for one another. Through these devotional services, their grace may be invoked, and the pure spiritual energy of Vrindavan may be generated within the building and within our hearts. Through heart-to-heart -heart connections, we sincerely endeavor to expand the flow of that spiritual energy, making the message of bhakti relevant and transformative to an ever-expanding family. And that's what I was feeling last night. I feel like the vision is, you know, the, the vision is, is achieved, you know, at least we were all feeling it at that time. You know, I, I could go on and on about so many different little um, interactions I had with different people, some of them, very uh sweet some of them humorous some of them heartbreaking um but in in every one it was like we're a family uh in a way that wasn't artificial wasn't showy wasn't you know, you know trying to be it was just real and uh it made me just feel so grateful for the community of bhakti yogis beautiful guru what well, great nights what great yeah. nights i'm looking forward to seeing you today yeah, hustle on down here after this retreat. What time are you going to make it down? Are you going to make it for the Kirtan in the park? <laughs> Probably I was like, not. no, we're not. We're Probably not. <laughs> you know, I got to pack kids, got to pack stuff. Yeah. And cruise down there. One thing you got to remember, Mara, tell him what he has to remember. Oh, I know. I got this down. Wisdom what? of the Sages, uh, Wisdom of the Sages, uh, Tablecloth. Yeah, but you say that now, but you got to remember when the time comes. Are you kidding? I tore I the house apart looking for it. Well, you didn't, but we uh, we found oh. it. <laughs> and it's already it's already loaded in Ragu's vehicle. Oh, you see, that's you see, very, that's what I'm looking for right there. You're already in the vehicle. Sassy. <laughs> You're a little sassy. <clears throat> You're a little sassy. Oh, I came home last night. Like I was just I, I was floating, Raghunath. I was floating. There's You're some, floating. yeah, I'm still floating. The, 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 there's something about pure kirtan, you know. And yeah. after this devotee, I don't know his name. He led a beautiful kirtan at the end. Normally, it ends about nine o'clock. He went a little mm -hmm. over, you know, maybe ten after nine or something like that. Yeah. But right before that, Radha Swami showed up, so mm -hmm. we just went extra. He did. Then he did another kirtan on top of it. Just again, like just another level of of uh, just floating on those waves, you know. Prabhupada appeared in our kirtan. That, oh, that must have been special. It was really, <laughs> yeah. Not, every, not, not everybody saw him, but I saw him. Nar, no, Narada Muni came. He just opened the garage door and just came right in. It's quite a oh, okay. mystical experience, Christina. Oh, the person that led the kirtan I was talking about, his name is Sai. And he's Sai from, from London. London. Okay. 
All right. <clears throat> All right, let's 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 dive into the Bhagavad Tom. We have okay. great times and more good times to come. This tonight with Radha Swami. Yeah. Oh, this retreat festival time this is exciting, isn't it? It is. This is it. And then it comes down. We come down for a week. Nothing, spe- nothing like special. We're just chilling out, getting our life together. And then we head off for Italy next week for the Wisdom of the Stages in Italy. But we had a lot of others here yesterday, too, and a lot of uh, Zoomers. And it was like a big family reunion. Oh, I want to give a shout out. Please. Um, shout out. Maybe we should make this part of the show, like shout out. Shout out Saturday. To, See you. <laughs> shout out to, <laughs> to people that we hear. Oh, we there's a whole group of us listen to your show that we don't even know about. Oh, yeah. Like where? So I met a lovely uh, young lady named Grungi. Um, and she she uh, lives in Honolulu, Hawaii. Shout out to Honolulu, Hawaii. And she, it was explained to me how she, she grew up in a devotee family. <laughs> it was fun. I hope so, with a name like Gorongi. Go, I don't know if you know Gopal, the Kirtan leader. He's great, a friend. And I hadn't seen him in a long time. It was his little sister. And he said, yeah, well, you know, my parents, by the time my little sister was growing up, they weren't as like, because um, the, the, the elder children in the family, they were really brought up in a devotional community. Yeah, and, that last child always gets a little... Yeah, it was. Uh, you could it, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. could figure. So it's Karangi. You know, she was saying that she she had embraced the practices, and she went to um, she went to like normal public schools where like these other ones are brought up in devotee bhakti yoga schools, right? And so that you know that affects you, and and yeah. but she's but they said but but when she heard wisdom of the sages that like oh it all became relevant it all became like meaningful. And she uh-huh. really fell in love with the podcast. And she said that there's a whole group of people in the temple in Honolulu, Hawaii, Iskan Honolulu, that every Saturday they get together, they make garlands for the deities in the temple together, and they listen to Wisdom of the Sages. So shout out. Shout out to Honolulu yeah. Temple. Honored to serve you guys. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe we want to shout out here since it's shout out day. We can't hear anything. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't think Shout I do any more shouting. <laughs> no more shouting. All right. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayeva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatojayam mudirayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasa Dev, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloki Bhakti Rabhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to my heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Madatam Nena Tasmaye Shri Gadaveda Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torch light of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 18, Text 28. You're on it today, Ramath. Well done. I'm on it. Text 28. And we're continuing on with uh, glorifications by different lords of the universes. This is uh, glorifying Matya Avatar right now. Mm. Fish. Fish Avatar. Then we're going to do Tortoise. Spoiler alert. Then then we're going to do Boar. (laughs) He comes in many different forms. Right. I know. Anthropomorphism. No way. We got a Boar God. (laughs) We got a Boar. And there's a whole section of our universe where everybody's particularly into that form. Is that interesting? It's interesting. I find that at, yeah. at the very least, the stuff is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. You know, okay. Here in this world, like you know, people into college football. Yeah. And then you got like a whole group of people, like say in Arkansas, where like they're into the the Razorbacks, which is the boar, right? Okay, that's where you're going with this. Okay, go. And they and they all have that boar, that image. They wear 
shirts with the boar and hats. OK, and, you know, that's a good analogy. They're like boar <laughs> conscious. So there's parts of the universe where like that as well. Yeah, there's parts of the country, there's parts of the universe where they're Ram conscious and the Shringadev conscious. It's very yeah. interesting. Yes. So it's all micro macro. So, yeah. All right. Oh, almighty Lord. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing about me lifting up that rock going, I am your overlord. <laughs> okay. Oh, almighty Lord, at the end of the millennium, this planet Earth, which is the source of all kinds of herbs, drugs, and trees. I guess they mean drugs like herbs, but it is, right? Yeah. Natural it, well, things. Yeah. We're natural drugs. <coughs> this Earth, it was inundated by water and drowned beneath the devastating waves. Mm. At that time, you protected me along with the earth and roamed the sea with great speed. Oh, unborn one, you are the actual maintainer of the entire universal creation, and therefore, you are the cause of all living entities. I offer my respectful obeisances to you. Isn't it so interesting? Like, here, here we have a water inundation story. Historically, even mundane scientists talk about a water inundation story. In the Bible, you have this water inundation story. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it might just have happened. <laughs> okay. The water inundation thing. I think so. It's cycles. Cycles, right? Mm. Seasons of the universe. Sukadeva Goswami continued. Hold, In it, hold, her hold That was text 28. Okay, continue. Yeah, text 29. In Hiranmaya Varsha, Hiranmaya Varsha. Okay, so go another pretty, place now. Now we're in another place. It's almost like I'm giving you a tour of the universe here. That's... Uh, to my left is Hiranmaya Varsha. The Supreme Lord Vishnu lives in the form of a tortoise. tortoise. Kurma, Sarida. That's, uh, that's, that's Maryland, the, the University of Maryland. They're they worship the a turtles, tortoise? Tortoise? Yeah. Tortoise. Tortoise. They worship a tortoise in Maryland? I think so. I think they're called the Terps. I think it's some kind of tortoise. Okay. The This most dear and beautiful form is always worshipped there in devotional service by Aryama, the chief. I always wondered about Aryama, the chief of the residents of Haranmaya Varsh, along with the other inhabitants of that land. They always chant the following hymns. That's right. right. Can you name the tenth uh, the the chat uh, where Arya Ma is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita? Can you name that verse? Arya Ma is yeah. mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in the tenth chapter. Tenth chapter. I think it's of uh, departed ancestors. I am Arya Ma. Oh. Yeah. Look that one up. Oh, my Lord, I offer respectful obeisances unto you who have assumed the form of a tortoise. So this is the prayer being offered. Yeah. You are the reservoir of all transcendental qualities and being entirely untinged by matter. You are perfectly situated in pure goodness. You move here and there in the water, but no one can discern your position. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Because of your transcendental position, you are not limited by past, present, and future. You are present everywhere as the shelter of all things, and therefore, I offer my obeisances to you again and again. You know, what I'm saying? you know what this reminds me of? We all have this proclivity to give love and worship and awe and 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 take care of. Also, like my daughter, my kids always had like the stuffed animals. They had billions of them, but my daughter was like very very expert at like each that she had a rotation and like every day when it was dinner time she'd bring a different one down like like i gotta feed this deity today like it was a <laughs> deity and like it would have it might have been like the tortoise or it might have been the koala or it might be the rabbit but every day like she i was like why didn't you bring the same one down no no it's not his turn today it's his turn there there is a natural proclivity to give worship and praise and take care i think this deity worship thing is woven into the head of all of us perhaps Maybe it's like one of our defaults. And in, when we don't have a deity, we repose it in a stuffed animal or. No, because it is our yeah. very nature. To give to love, love and worship. To serve. Yeah. To love and to serve. So children do it naturally. Mm -hmm. You know. Then we screw them up. That's where we come in, the parents. <laughs> screw up this kid. 
<laughs> My dear Lord, you manifest your different energies in countless forms. As living entities born from wombs, that's us. Oops, did, I, did I skip something? Mara, Mara's so good, she just scrolls up, and I've already forgot that. So, okay, she's already done the work. My dear Lord, the, this visible cosmic manifestation is a demonstration of your own creative energy. Interesting. Since the countless varieties of forms within the cosmic manifestation are simply a display of your external energy, this virat rupa or universal body is not your real, real form. Except for a devotee and transcendental consciousness, no one can perceive your actual form. Therefore, I offer my obeisances unto you. Okay. <clears throat> can you read that last sentence again? Therefore, I offer my obeisances oh, to you. Oh, the last two sentences. <laughs> okay. No, just keep reading that last one devotee. again and again. Go ahead. <laughs> Except for a devotee and transcendental consciousness, no one can perceive your actual form. It reminds me when you get it in the old days when you had a, a vinyl record and you get a skip in the record and it just plays the same thing over and over. Higher and higher, bit higher and higher, bit <laughs> higher and higher, and, and you have to like jump on the floor or something to make the needle skip. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're gonna, we were talking about this yesterday. A lot of the a lot of the prayers are going to go in this direction now. Yes, that um, we remember we're talking about Richard Dawkins. Yes, or oh, the athe famous atheist. Yeah, you know, these, there's a certain class of atheists that came out. He was among them. Started publishing books that were like what I call like... Uh, we'll teach those dummies who believe in a higher power. It, it, well, yeah, I would call it almost like religious atheism. Mm. It's like, you know, this blind faith atheism, you know. Um, <clears throat> atheism that's not so... When you really pick it apart, it's not so rational. And uh, we're t we're talking about that, you know, like we're saying, he, he, you know, he gave that, he he opened up his book with this quote, you know, isn't it enough just to appreciate a garden without having to think that there's some fairies living underneath it, you know? Right. His point is, you know, no, nobody believes that there's fairies underneath it. But if you really want to understand the garden, you know, and we said it's kind of like saying, oh, imagine, couldn't can't we just appreciate the Mona Lisa? without having to think that there's some fairy behind it. No, there's no fairy behind it. There was an artist who very intentionally designed the, you know, the composition of that. And then with great skill painted it, you know, conveying something, you know, from within himself to the rest of the world. And, um, and if you want to understand what that painting is, you do have to understand that there was this artist behind it, you know, you want to understand it in truth. And so here, you know, we're here, it, it's, it's getting to that point that a lot of what our human experience is meant to be, what the opportunity of being a human being affords one mm -hmm. is the potential to see what you can't just to understand, to see and understand what's behind something that, um, a less evolved person will never see, you know, and it, it means becoming thoughtful, thoughtful about life. It means becoming humble. It means hearing from other sources with an open heart, letting go of your attachments that cloud what you will, what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept, becoming truly objective. And, and, um, here, it's being described that one really needs to become like a, a what did it say? What did it say again? Because um, since the countless varieties of forms, blah, 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 except for a devotee in transcendental consciousness, mm. no one can perceive your actual form. No one can perceive that you're this form of you that's behind everything. You know? the, the ants under that rock, when I lifted that rock, they had no idea of how massive I was and how powerful I am. And in the same way, I am. You know what? It's time for Kastuba. Yeah. It's time for a shelter lyric squirrel. Uh, hit Ready? It. Hit it. Here we go. One thing when, 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 when we started the band was, and a lot of the times in the, in the, in the punk rock scene, it was, you know, riddled with atheism and in, in, and when we brought the concept of higher power and source and stuff like that into the music scene, you know, 
the common thing that an atheist will say is, well, you guys just believe in a God because you're insecure. Right. You know, I think I heard it's that for before. you to be a little bit right. You're so insecure. You just need some God to pray to to make you safe. Here's the lyrics. Ready? Security. Security. Well, security. No, it's called in defense of reality. Oh, yeah. OK. It's a security. Well, how secure are we? Making our plans in a castle of sand as our dreams get dragged to sea. You say you're independent, right? This is a big thing. I don't believe in your stupid mass thought. You say you're independent. Well, is that a fact? It's by creation's donation you are maintained. Nice. You're only maintained. You're only living because creation has donated you all the resources, right? It's like me busting into your apartment, taking your food, using your water, you know, uh, going through your things, wearing your clothes. And then when someone says, where do you get all this stuff from? I was like, it was, just, it was just here, right? It's by creation's donation, you are maintained, but you'd rather turn your back while I'm in defense of reality. Today's modern science, next verse. Today's modern science, that's your modern religion. Remember, we we're talking about, go. I'm under the rock speculating about what's going on in the ant world. There's a whole universe outside above that rock, perhaps, right? It could be. The ant has no clue. Where are those ants? You have no empiric scientific evidence that it doesn't exist. Sure. There we go. So today's modern science, that's your modern religion. It's guesswork taught as fact. Don't talk back, right? Oh. You're not even allowed to question the narrative or you're some nut. You're some loody. You're some fanatic. It's, it's actually <laughs> bullying. It's intellectual bullying. It's intellectual on. bullying. That's what's going on, Kostuba. I like Thank that. You for telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk back. Blind faith, right? They claim we have blind faith. It's blind faith in those scientists' decision. And how good is your science when you live under a rock? Mm. Right? Um, you say explosions started creation. We live under a rock here. We're trying to speculate about the origin of everything. You say explosions started creation, and we're just chemical combinations that you your existence the love you have for your partner for your dog for the love of nature the joy you feel from singing and dancing that is all fabricated all it is all you are are elements on a periodic table that's don't say love don't say mm. like don't say ethics don't say right and wrong that is all fabricated mm, machine right yeah, you say explosion started creation and we're just chemical combinations. Really? Would you take that same stand if there was a gun in my hand? No. Would you say, okay, so I can just blow your head off because you're just chemicals. What's it's the meaningless. Difference? If I, right? It's meaningless. What's it? It's a chemical spill. Who cares? Or would you beg for your salvation? See, no one can live up to this philosophy. They can talk it and they can posture, but they can't live up to it. Actually, their conclusion proves their insanity. A creation without a creator? Can it be? Like a painting without a painter. Absurdity. We just talked about that yesterday. Yeah. No, I don't want to run away. I want to embrace reality. That's it? That's the whole song? Good night, everyone. That, oh, Raghunath, you were on fire when you were at this stage of your life right there, you know? Yeah, you're not that you're not now. <laughs> I don't know you're <laughs> what am I now? <laughs> you were young, healthy, vibrant. You were <laughs> devoted. You were serving. You know, back then it was great. You were really it doing was great, great back in then. the old days. <laughs> oh yeah, and I miss that. You're a mess. <laughs> no, no, no. But 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 you were you were um. That is, how old were you when you wrote that? Twenty four. Yeah. So you were. <clears throat> you had to. Well, that's the great thing about taking what this message has uh, and this is one gift that me and Kostuba got our job as monks was to give this to other people so what you had to do is you had to really internalize it exactly. because people were going to challenge you and then you yeah, have yeah. to really think well oh, they do have a point there the scientists do say this happened then you have to really start to internalize this am i just dogmatically accepting everything they're telling me or or and then you get defeated. And then you have to figure out, are they right? Or am I just not explaining this right? And it makes you deeply internalize this. You know, and I, I've said this before. It's like a lot of these things that we speak about, like verses from the Gita, um, that Dehi no shmunyata, Dehi, we're not the body, we're spirit souls. I've had to say that like a thousand times to myself and explain it in a thousand different ways. And that's how I'll internalize it because 
you're going to get challenged from every angle and you have to not just quote defeat them but to defeat the doubts that will come up when the path gets hard and the path will get hard you'll get challenged at every step there will be so-called demons to that 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 challenge us that that come from within inside us to say oh, why are you controlling your senses why are you controlling your mind why are you believing some old books do whatever you want we have to be able to slay those demons with knowledge and so this is why wisdom literature is there and this is why we take that wisdom then take it into kirtan and because was saying the other day the kirtan is powerful but you need to study the philosophy with it. And then the kirtan becomes amplified. We were saying it's a, we were saying in class the other day, it's sort of like working out is good, but if you're just eating uh, Domino's pizza 24 seven, then who cares about working out? You got, you need like a really good diet. You need really good rest. And then you're working out. That's really powerful. You know? Mm. So kirtan becomes powerful when we, when we start to imbibe this wisdom with it and then practice it. Not just hear it, but practice it. You know, we're gonna th 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 thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> All that you just shared. I was thinking, uh, you know, who I saw last night it was Shamali. I just saw her. Where? California. Oh, okay. Well, the podcast out. girl. Yeah, Modern Yogi Podcast. Modern Yogi Podcast. Check it out, people. So she's the daughter of my old friend. You know, Indranila. Yeah, uh, d devotee, I go way back with. So I knew Shamali when she did little little girl, mm. and now she's all grown Isn't that up. Weird when you meet somebody who's now in the regular <clears throat> adult, and you're like, yep. oh yeah, you were. I knew when I, I had that the other day too. Oh yeah, I knew you when you were a tiny child, tiny toddler. Yeah. Okay, but now and so, okay. And so now she listens to our podcast, Shamali, and she started her own podcast with two friends. Shout out. To the Modern Yogi podcast. Shout out. We're doing <laughs> shout outs now. And um, I was just, what you shared, Raghunath, was so important. Like you and I, we had different services coming up. But in both cases, our faith was challenged again and again and again on a daily basis. Yeah. It's almost like you threw yourself into the fire. Yeah. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes that really you, you, someone would challenge you like, yeah, that that actually makes sense. It's not like we were trying to just like dig our heels in. If we're right, we're just going to stay here. We actually wanted to understand this stuff. So there's got to be a deep understand. Like I am I was ready to change me, Ch change my mind. I still yeah. am like that. If you got a better idea, I'm open to it. If you think something's higher than pure love of God, that we're all connected spiritually and there's uh, the goal of life is to love God. I, I'm, I'm open to that what's your what's your conclusion how should i live my life yeah <clears throat> i think for both you and i we went through each of us went through a stage of about 13 years or so 10 to 13 years where we were presenting this publicly and getting challenged at every every day refining it studying it deeper bringing it back out again you know like so there's that and then we both went into the yoga world yeah, you know, you, the yoga world was easy. It was like, uh, but was but like, but it was a challenge for me in a sense to relate in a new way, w with a certain acceptance. I mean, those uh, punks were whipping like baloney at our vehicle. You know? <laughs> it was like we are we are going through hell dealing with the punks and atheists, and always a challenge getting stuff whipped at us on stage. In the punks, it's like they're already like, you know, they. They've opted in for Ganesh and they're in. OK, well, tell me about Ganesh. OK, we can tell you about Ganesh. I felt like that was easy. That was like, uh, um, you know, wrestling with kid, children. Uh, but what I'm saying is I think it had something to do with with um, our process of learning how to present Bhakti. Yeah, yeah. It was sure. a different audience and it required different yeah. sensitivities. Yeah. And, and and not only that, different evolution, different growth in, in ourselves. And it, but it was a more receptive audience, I feel. No like. question. Like people want people. They actually are there to hear it in the punk scene. They're just sort of like they're there to challenge it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Prabhupada writes some interesting stuff here. Can you read when 
in the commentary where it starts a fire consists of a fire consists of three elements 31 yeah a fire consists of three elements heat and light which are the energy of the fire and the fire itself the fire okay, consists so of those three are the elements, three heat and light which are the energy of the fire and the fire itself okay anyone can understand that the original fire is the reality and that the heat and the light are simply the energy of the fire that's a great analogy isn't it yeah it's like heat and light are real but they're not the original source they're, they're, what they're this is describing is itself. even even from a um spiritual perspective we may say okay this universe is god and in one sense it is and in one sense it is just as like heat is real light like is real say uh, you know you worship some god in the temple i worship the ocean the ocean is my god okay and in one sense it is as if that's more profound what that's saying is <laughs> that's even that's true but but relatively superficial and you can continue reading heat and light are the formless energies of fire formless and in that sense they are unreal ooh, ooh. In that sense they're unreal only the fire has form and therefore it is the real form of the heat and the light. It's the as form Krishna from which states, heat and light emanate. Hmm. As Krishna states in the Gita, nine, chapter 9, Maya tatam idam sarvam jagadavyaktamurtina By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. Thus, the impersonal conception of the Lord is like the expansion of heat and light from the fire. Right. Because you run into people in India or just like people just speculating about, you know, you go to the ocean, you go to the desert, you go to the Grand Canyon, you go to the forest, you look up at the sky at night in the countryside. And you're like, this is God. And, and, and it's almost like that is sort of like the first conception of God. Like, I thought I was the center of everything. Look at this universe we live in. This is massive. I am actually tiny compared to this desert sky. You know, um, it's even like a, taking this a similar analogy or that were related, parallel. <clears throat> maybe, maybe you best keep reading because my throat is so gone. You just keep reading. You're raspy. You're raspy, sir. What are you going to do? You're supposed to be singing out loud from the bottom of your heart to Lord John. I was you singing. Take it easy. The, the you got to go to the health food store, buy some licorice root sticks. Okay. Not Twizzlers, licorice root. And not Twizzlers. You suck on those things. I come Twizzlers. in there with a strawberry Twizzler. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong licorice. Yeah, you got to just suck on those sticks, man. All right, I'll do it. Mm. Buy me my own. Oh, all right, we're, we're in the next. You want me to read the purple more? Or you want to read keep the next keep going? Okay. So, um, thus, the, in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord also says. Matstani Sarvabhutani Natjaham Teshvavashtitaha. The entire material creation is resting on Krishna's energy, either material, spiritual, or marginal. But because his form is absent from the expansion of his energy, he is not personally present. This inconceivable expansion of the Supreme Lord's energy is called Achincha Shakti. What does that mean? Achincha. Inconceivable Shakti. Incon okay. Achintya. Inconceivable. Therefore, no one can understand the real form of the Lord without becoming his devotee. Why? Because the devotee, because it's the it's by the Lord's prerogative that he reveals himself to the devotee. And the prerogative, what's the basis of the prerogative? It's not it, um whimsical. It, it's not intel it's not due to your intellect. Like I'm I'm intelligent, I should be able to figure this out. Or but, I've got but, some instruments. I should be able to figure this out. It's but, but, it's, it's the heart of the is the heart of the devotee. When Krishna reciprocates with the heart of the devotee, yeah. then there's revelation. And my my point is that Krishna's prerogative is not some whimsical. It's not the prerogative of some whimsical king who who has no heart and doesn't care about the subjects. You know. Oh. <clears throat> He's got a very sweet prerogative. Very sweet prerogative. And the prerogative is really the softening of our own hearts hmm. to accept divine love. So 
he's he's he'll either you know it'll be revealed through our reformation and, and really that has a lot to do with developing humility right sometimes these the, these are people the, the darkened figures the darkened figures <laughs> we're the darkened figures we're the darkened figures um they From harrisburg they become very arrogant very arrogant they'll say the most arrogant things that's sort of the religious figures too but yes that's another thing right it's another thing but the doc configures yeah it's, it's all arrogance but, so. but 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 yeah but so the point here is that it's like groundhog day right like the movie yeah. groundhog day is that we want to dig deeper and deeper become more and more sincere become more and more truly objective inquire with a deeper sincerity with a deeper humility and we'll begin to see the painter behind the painting we'll be we'll be able to the prerogative of of krishna <clears throat> to reveal to us what is otherwise a chinti or inconceivable will come therefore no one can understand the real form of the lord without becoming his devotee i remember once we're gonna my my guru had to speak he he was um he was an undergraduate at uh, Southern Methodist University in the religious studies department. Mm -hmm. But he was invited to speak at, I think it's called the, uh, maybe the American Institute of Religion or something. It's the biggest religious academic conference. Happens every year. How did that go? Well, it went really good. And, um, because his professors were like were a super high level guy and they invited him to speak an undergraduate never gets invited to speak normal professors right. never get invited is but my guru was uh, this not only was he this very fascinating student but he was also this uh high ranking member of uh, what they would categorize as uh modern what what is it modern religious religion. New, new religious movement new religious movements yes yeah <clears throat> So when it came time for questions and answers, my guru's professor kind of put him on the spot, kind of challenged him and said, um, are you saying that for one to truly understand what's being taught in Srimad Bhagavatam, that, that, that it could only really be understood by a devotee, by a Krishna Bhakta? Okay. Hmm. That's a very... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? That question is loaded with, you, you know, it's like the, it puts him in a spot because on one hand, our philosophy is that, yes, if we're hearing it right here, you know, like you must be a devotee in order to truly understand this. Mm. But in the academic realm, that is very much frowned upon. Right. That idea. Because it sounds very exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. And it's, yeah, that question was loaded with a lot of landmines. There's no good answer. Either right. you have to sell yourself out. What'd he say? Yeah. He said, he said, um, he's, so the question was, do you have to be a devotee to understand Bhagavatam? He said, no, you don't. Because you are my friend. <laughs> and when he said this, it was, it accomplished many things in one in you know in, in in one short little thing it illustrated that on one hand he has this faith and they have this belief and he he wouldn't abandon it to be popular in the academic world but it also illustrated that he wasn't a hardened religious fanatic that felt himself superior to others mm. he, so, so he expressed both intellect and heart both religious conviction and um an inclusive, um, soft-hearted um, uh, mood of humility. You are my friend. By the way, Tamak Krishmaraj was the highest rated student in SMU's history. The university gave him his own office after attending <laughs> for one year. Well, he was, in the history of the university, he was the only person, the, the, the highest honor, Mm. He, he he won many honors for different essays or this or that. 
but the highest honor that the school has is called the Senior Student Award. And that award is award, it's voted on by the professors. The professors choose one senior student, most mm. outstanding. And in the history of the university, which it goes back, I don't know, at least a century, and it's a very prestigious university in the Southwest, mm. in the history of the university, he was the only one to win it unanimously. On a squirrel, I would like to see Mara with a chart like, okay, this movie was quoted. How many times did they quote Groundhog Day in Wisdom of Sages? Okay, and a close number. Number one here is The Matrix. As we've quoted this one many, many times. But number two is Groundhog Day. I'd like to see that chart. Maybe the chart for shelter lyrics. Sharon Agadi was quoted many, many <laughs> times here. But in defense of reality is a close runner up. Well, you are what so. Chart? What other charts will we have? You have such a thing for trivia. Yeah, we need a Wisdom of Sages trivia day. Any other interesting charts? Well, I said that. I said that. The Matrix, that's number one on the chart. Okay. No, other chart. Oh, yeah. What what songs do does Raghunath blurt out? Here, here we have number one is Give Me a Higher Love. Yeah. Seinfeld <laughs> episodes. Okay. All right. I think we're we, done. It's, it's at 56. I think we're done. I think your yeah. voice is done. My I think voice no more done. talking. Shh. <laughs> okay miss mara we need some takeaways we need some nugget takeaways goodies to take with us for the rest of the day and we're gonna all meet lord juggernaut rathiatra here's the microphone this is your chance to hold the mic sing kirtan to please the lord yep generate the spiritual energy of vrindavan yep it's our nature to love and to serve yep we need transcendental consciousness to see God. Yep. Understand the gardener to appreciate the garden. Ooh, yeah. We are maintained by creation's donations. Isn't that a nice one? It's by creation's donation you are maintained. Ooh. Don't be an intellectual bully. Yeah, you big bully. <laughs> How good is your science when you live under a rock? Right. How much can you figure it out? If I'm living under the desk, if I'm living under my desk, what can I tell you about the stars? That's a good quote, too. <laughs> she made that one up. Wow. <laughs> Paris impressed. Hi. Did you hear that? I said, wow. She said, wow. Live your philosophy. <clears throat> live it. And slay the demons of doubt with knowledge. Do we yeah. say that? Yeah, we well, not as a not as a zinger, but it is a good one, of course. Thanks everybody for joining us. I forgot oh to mention my something. God. You forgot to mention something? What did you forget to mention? That when my guru said that answer, yeah. The whole crowd broke out in the kind of laughter and cheering. Yeah, because and afterwards. Sort of Afterwards, my professor said to him, Your guru. Yeah. Said, I threw you a curveball and you hit it out of the park. Aww. Yeah. And they hugged and they held pinkies. Maybe. Maybe held pinkies after that. Just walk down the hall. You know what's really cute in Indians where boys just hold hands? They just walk holding hands. Isn't that adorable? adorable. You don't do that so much in America. Straight guys holding hands, having a good time, loving each other. I'm going to hold your hand when I see it, because we're going to hold your hand. We're going to walk through. But we're not in India. No, it's OK. We're in Washington Square Park. We can hold hands and just we're not going to do it. Feel that love in our hearts. OK. And we can slide out of the hand to the pinky and just shake our hands Rana up and down. Swami. Holding that pinky. Rana Swami took my hand and held it and walked with me yesterday. Oh, see, do that. You and me, you and me. Thanks, everybody, okay. for joining us. I am so looking forward to seeing people tonight. And tomorrow, and see Lord Jagannath. And I want to thank everybody from this retreat this this week that's happened here at the farm. What a beautiful week it's been. Let the magic continue to flow. Wake up, you sleepy heads. Give some clapping. Come on. Where the heck is Cindy? What is Cindy sleeping in? Let's all just clap right into her room. Wake up. <laughs> They're having Sage Group AM over there. What is going on? All right. He was probably making breakfast. Okay. 
All right, you guys, we are going to split because we have a yoga retreat going on here. But I love you, and I will see a lot of you today or tomorrow. It is a beautiful day today. Costuba, no more talking. Shh, 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 shh. Let the magic continue to flow. Let the Govardhan dust be in your lungs. Hari